The Draeger Drug Test 5000 analysis system doesn't just... Sleek and futuristic, it may look like a Keurig coffee machine, but this is the future of Canadian drug testing. The Draeger Drug Test 5000 is... The Draeger 5000 tests saliva for the presence of THC, but a Norwegian study found it produces false positives 15% of the time. And it doesn't work that well in the cold. There are lots of devices out there, so why was the Draeger 5000 the first to get Canadian approval? The Canadian Society of Forensic Science, which sets the standards for science used in law enforcement, recommended the Draeger 5000 to the federal government. But the society wouldn't explain why it chose the device. And that worries defence lawyer Kyla Lee. That, to me, tells me that there's something in there that would cause us to question the reliability of the device. Because if everything that they tested in it showed great results all the time, they would be excited to share that with the public. What the Forensic Society did share were the guidelines it created in selecting a drug testing device. One of those is that drug screening equipment shall be capable of being operated at an ambient temperature range of at least 5 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius. That's not what law enforcement wanted. Public Safety Canada, working with seven different police forces, said the number one thing police wanted in a device was a high reliability in extreme cold temperatures. The Draeger's ideal temperature range? Plus 4 to 40 degrees Celsius. The Police Association is unfazed by Draeger's potentially temperamental temperature limitations. Am I confident that it's going to work perfectly right off the bat or am I, am I concerned that, you know, whether or not the, the testing was as rigorous as it possibly could? I, I think you can always find issues with any piece of equipment like that. Public Safety Canada says police officers will learn how to keep the Draeger units at their ideal operating temperature as a part of their training in how to use the device. Katie Nicholson, CBC News, Toronto. Okay, so clearly there are some questions about the technology, but what about getting offenders into the courtroom and prosecuting drug-impaired driving uh, cases? Well, if drunk driving conviction rates are any indication, there might be some trouble ahead. Canada's overall conviction rate is relatively low, about 60% in 2015. Ontario was a bit better at 65%, but in Quebec, it was less than half. In B.C., get this, only about a quarter of charges stuck. Now, that's partly due to the rise of a drunk driving legal defense industry, one that challenges the reliability and maintenance of alcohol testing devices. And as we've just heard, roadside drug testing has some challenges, too. And considering THC remains detectable in the body much longer after use than alcohol, it's not hard to imagine a tidal wave of court challenges. In fact, a Statistics Canada report says drug-impaired driving cases already take twice as long to prosecute than drunk driving ones.